Hi, welcome to Thursday, my foundation arts students. I'm going to jump right in and let you know what you're doing today, um, what's coming up, so forth. Remember, every day that you're going to come to this announcement section right here. So here's today, 121. And you are going to click here for your discussion question that you do every every time. It says, what is the greatest act of kindness you have done for someone? So that is your um, uh, discussion question today. So in your announcements every day, you're just going to make sure you click this and write. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just to make a list or you might want to write something. This helps me to get to know you a little bit better and also allows me to know that you are visiting your class every day and seeing what, hey, hey, um, seeing each time you go to the discussion question, like for today, you're going to click here and it says click here for your discussion question and that will take you to the question um, today and today is what is um, the greatest act of kindness you've done. Um, I hope you didn't have to rack your brain too long to figure that out. I'm sure we all uh, can list many, many things. Um, so just kind of jot that down. The discussion questions, one, help me get to know you a little better, and two, also keep some accountability to make sure that you're coming every day, you're checking on this class, you are, you know, realizing what you're doing for the day, what you might have due, you know, tomorrow, like tomorrow, you're going to have some sketchbook assignments due. So speaking of which, I am going to go to the um, module section. And right here at the top, it says daily sketchbook assignment instructions. Every day you need to get uh, familiar on clicking on that. And then every day you, we are gonna be working with an artist. And today we are working with, Jean Van Eyck, and we are gonna be discussing Arna Feeney's wedding. So you're gonna draw this image of uh, this wedding to the best of your ability. And then you are gonna write this information down about this particular artist. Um, this painting, and he is considered one of the most original and complex paintings in Western art because there's a lot of beauty in it, but there's also, hey, hey, there's also a lot of iconography. The view in the mirror shows two figures who are witnessing the marriage. So when you look at this painting, if we were looking at it on, on a better image or in a book, this mirror back here, there's two people that's very hard to tell in this imagery, but there's two people that are watching the, these two couples get married. So that's one very interesting thing. Um, the groom um, here is raising his hand like he's taking some sort of oath. And uh, the bare feet indicate that this event is taking on holy ground. Whoa. Sorry, I do this all the time. I'm not used to, um, this is a PC and I'm used to my, uh, my Mac. Also, there is uh, the dog in this painting is a symbol, is a symbol uh, for fidelity. And the wife, believe it or not, in this picture is not pregnant. This was a style of fashion at that time and she's holding her dress up. They never actually even had children. So it's interesting when you look at this painting, I'm gonna go back to it. When you look at this painting right here, it, it seems, it looks to us, you know, that she might be, or she's pregnant um, when you look at this and you read the title and the title says, uh, you know, it's a wedding taking place, um, but she was not pregnant. She was just holding her dress up. This couple actually never had children, um, but there is just an interesting painting based on there's a couple here that are watching this marriage take place. Um, he, like I said, has a, his hand up like he's taking an oath and there's this dog here and um, the dog 
uh, symbolizes fidelity. If you click on any of these blue links, they're hyperlinks, and sometimes they'll take you to more information or they will zoom you into parts of the painting. So today for your sketch assignment, that is what you are doing. In your sketchbook, you are going to be drawing this to the best of your ability. I know we're in beginning art one, but remember we like to practice drawing from references. So you're gonna look at this, uh, this painting, you're gonna write Jean Van Eyck's name down, and then you're gonna write this following information in, around, or somewhere near that uh, daily sketch. Now I'm gonna go back um, to the modules because I've showed you the last few days some examples of how you can do your sketchbook. Um, you, I have had students in the past that have uh, drawn these, uh, you know, they've taken up a whole entire page and then wrote the notes on top of the page. You know, that's fine. You can do them all um, in one little section if you want to. Uh, however you want to practice drawing what you're looking at, you might, if, you, if you're not comfortable doing the, the facial features, that's fine, but I just want you to be able to sketch something about that painting and write down the artist's work, because tomorrow here under assignments, it's going to say, look at all this work we've already done. By the way, progress reports are next week. I think they're next Thursday. How about that? We've already done three weeks of work um, by next Thursday. Right here where it says week to upload, that's when you're going to upload your sketches that you've been doing this week. You're drawing the artist's painting and writing their name and writing their information. information. And that's due tomorrow. Uh, also, I'm going to just kind of go through your projects. You've had a lot of projects. Um, most people are completing them. Most of these projects I have do, um, you know, the same day. Uh, I don't take off for late work. I just kind of like to give you a due date. If, if you do it today, you know, you've already got it done. You just kind of stay ahead. Um, we have done the drawing upside down imagery. We've drawn three of our hands in contour lines. We have been the last couple of days working with Zentangle patterns. We have at the beginning learned about line and we also did a pre-assessment test. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a very simple line landscape. Landscape should sound familiar to you. It is uh, it's typically a type of art that is showing some sort of hills or land. And you are going to, we're gonna work with, um, let me see if I can't get this bigger. It's very simple. The sheet kind of walks you through it. You do not have to, to complete yours that, so it looks like this one. I don't know why I can't ever get this bigger. I'm just going to kind of leave it right here. But um, in this landscape, we're going to use um, just repetitive line. And you should be familiar with that now because you've been using line repetitive line and making different types of designs for your Zentangles. So today what you're gonna do is you are going to create some sort of landscape. It does not have to look like this, but you're going to, you might even wanna pull up on Google like uh, a mountain landscape to look at or look outside you know, your window, but you're going to in each step um, draw some lines curvy lines. We're going to kind of keep this organic. Organic means um, found in nature type of lines. That means you don't need a ruler. It doesn't all have to be straight and angular. It can if you want to, but you are going to taking the concept of line. I want to make sure y'all can see that. Let me, let me turn the brightness up. Oh, it is up. Um, you're going to take the concept of line and you um, in, on your paper, you're going to kind of just go from one side to the other. You can put a sun up there if you want to, if you wanted mountains up there, however you want to do your landscape. But what I want you to practice is adding these multiple lines. You're going to continue adding lines. You're going to continue repeating and following what you are seeing. I'm going to kind of zoom this in, um, see if I can scroll it up. I want it to go further up.
So if you see at the bottom, like right here on this one. So after you kind of get your basic details of just your basic lines, this is where you're practicing. This is, I know this seems like, why am I just repeating these lines and lines? But what you're learning when you're doing this, and you're coming back in and you're just repeating the line on top of that, you're learning line control. So there's a reason every time we do something in here, there's a reason I'm asking you to do that. You, after you get those basic, these very first lines drawn, if I could work my computer, I would just be so much happier. You are gonna, after you get these basic outlines drawn right here, all these little just basic outlines, you're now gonna come back in with your pencil and you're just gonna continue repeating the lines, repeating the curves in whichever way. And what that's doing is it's giving you hand control, it's giving you eye control because you have to watch the one above it and then you have to repeat it. I'm gonna draw on the board in a second to show you. Let me turn the lights on. Um, so that's what you're doing today. You should be able to do this today with no problem. Um, you can fill up your page if you would like, or if you know you want to do half a page, that's fine. You can turn your page. Let me turn this. Uh, uh, there we go. Let me turn the lights on and draw on the board for you. So it may seem very simple, but I want you to take your time and I want you to take your time with repeating these lines over and over and over again. All right. So if this was my paper, let me find down my marker. If this was my paper, here's my paper in my sketchbook. You could turn your paper vertical if you want to, so straight up and down, or if you wanted to turn it horizontal. You can do it that way as well. Totally up to you which way you want to do it. But start off um, by just kind of making these nice little little lines. Maybe you're just, you know, thinking of in the mountains. You know, maybe you have, um, you've taken a trip somewhere. Just kind of think about how you could make a landscape. Maybe the sun is rising or the sun is setting. Um, and then once you get a basic outline, you're going to come back in and you're going to repeat what you see and you're going to try to, and this is what I'm talking about. It looks real easy, but it's not. You're going to try to keep the line quality the same. You're going to try to keep the space in between each line the same. So I know it seems and it looks like it's simple, but it's not. And what what that's doing is it's giving you hand eye control because you have to look at this line above here to come here and repeat the line if that makes sense. So what you want to do is try not to have too many wonky areas where it's super close or you know you want to really try and this is a skill that we're going to be using a whole bunch in in the other types of you know, everything has a baby step. Everything starts with this and then we move to this. But this will definitely give you a good sense of eye control and hand control. You guys will be a little bit more successful with it because you won't be drawing like, you know, up like this. Um, I could come in here and, you know, make a whole nother little type of line. But the point is, is to fill this whole thing up with line. So it's almost like your landscape is moving and practice line control. Yes, you can do this in pencil. If you wanna do it in pen or marker, that's perfectly fine. Same for, the, same for the, the sun. Maybe I start here in the middle with the spiral, okay? I mean, mine's looking a little wonky. Now, that this is on top, this part of this hill is on top of that sun. So I'm just gonna kind of stop that spiral right there and then I'm gonna come over here and then I'm gonna pick up and I'm just gonna kind of keep going and keep going. Now notice I've kind of got these a little bit wider separated. This is very much, I don't see, see how kind of I got wonky, but sometimes that kind of looks cool too. This is very much almost like if you've um, ever studied uh, Vincent Van Gogh, I don't think we've done Van Gogh yet. Hold on, I'm gonna walk um, with my computer and show you um, 
in my classroom, I have a painting. I bet you've seen this before. Um, this is the Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh. It's just been painted on one of the windows in, in my classroom. Now you can see it's very swirly. Um, and so this, what we're doing with our lines, you could do with a brush and paint and it would make, um, it would make your painting, it would make uh, whatever you're working on look very, like it's moving, um, which is a really cool technique. But for us right now, we're just trying to get really good line control, hand and eye coordination, kind of goes back to when we were drawing, um, uh, what were we drawing? Um, kind of goes back to when we were drawing, what were we drawing? And uh, well, obviously our hands, but something else I had you, um, moving at the same speed. Anyway, these all have a purpose to them. So that's what you're doing today. You're doing some sort of landscape design, but you're only filling it in with line, only filling it in with line. Now, if you want to, you know, because this is very similar to what we did with the Zentangles, you might, you know, decide that you might, you know, want to come back in like we did with the Zentangles and, and shade some areas thicker if you would like. However you would like to incorporate this is up to you, but you are just going to complete this whole whole imagery, you know, are there, are there some sort of clouds up here? Um, you're going to create a drawing that is a landscape that you're going to fill over and over with line. You know, maybe you do something that is horizontal and you're going to do something, uh, you know, like maybe it's like this and, you know, maybe you have your son, you know, up here and then, you know, Sometimes you see these fields that are kind of like segmented in different ways like this. So however you want to do this, but the point is you are going to take your time and you are going to follow the line above. Follow the line above. We're gonna do um, in the next couple of days, uh, an optical illusion that this type of practice, keeping your lines very perfect each time is going to pay off because you're going to have to have it. Uh, you're going to have to really work on keeping this, the spaces in between um, about the same. So that's what you're doing today. It should be fun, should be relaxing, just like our Zentangles have been. Um, and, you know, there's no right or wrong. You do not have to do your landscape like the image that I um, have given you in that sheet. Totally up to you. You could do it in color if you want to. You can come back in and color it however you want to. Um, but that's what we're doing today. You are doing your discussion question um, and you are also drawing the image of that wedding and writing those notes. So you have plenty of time to get all this done um, right now. Do I have any questions from our live participants? No. Y'all are good. All right, well, as usual, I am going to stop uh, this live recording and I'm gonna upload it um, into the announcement sections for those of you that watch it later. And then I'll open this back up. If you want to show me something or you know ask me something, I'll be right back, okay? <laughs>